this week. Start your engines. We are recapping our time with NASCAR and the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Plus, we have a question from the RV Miles Facebook group regarding packing your bearings. This is RV Miles. RV Miles is sponsored by L.L. Bean dedicated to helping you experience all the benefits of time outside and stay more comfortable while you're out there. From soft and breathable activewear designed to do it all, to just right layers perfect for changing weather, to sun smart clothing that blocks the sun's harmful rays, every L.L. Bean product is made with comfortable time outside in mind. Visit LLBean.com to shop now. L.L. Bean, be an outsider. Welcome to episode 215 of the RV Miles podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who have been on the road with our three boys since 2016. Here at RV Miles, we talk all things RV and outdoors from industry news to travel destinations, our national parks, and a whole lot more. We are excited to be back in a campground. Oh my we goodness. have spent, since we got back on the road in our new RV, we have spent the vast majority of that time rally camping, which yes. is, you know, parking on pavement very close to somebody else. First at the RV Entrepreneur Summit, then at NASCAR, which was still a premium sort of experience, but, but it was pavement. And now uh, at the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta, which was a fantastic experience that we'll cover on a future episode. But now we are back in a in a kitschy little Route 66 <laughs> campground. Still just as close to our neighbors <laughs> as before. <laughs> Paying a ridiculous amount yeah. because it's post-balloon fiesta and everybody else came over here as well. But yes. we are happy to have hookups again. We went nine days boondocking. I think we actually went more like 10 or 11. More like 10 or 11? Yeah, got really close to yeah. two weeks. Cause, well, yeah, because the balloon fiesta was nine uh, was nine days long yeah. and we were there longer. So yeah. yeah, we, without emptying our tanks at all, that composting mm -hmm. toilet got us through. We did get a water fill from a friend, which was yes. awesome, but uh, it has been a lot of time without showers and um, <laughs> conserving water and we're happy to be able to just rip those it, tanks oh open gosh. and let Ooh, it go. Let that water flow. Yeah, I <laughs> I think if you saw my post recently over on the Our Wondering Family Instagram page, you know that I immediately booked it for the laundromat because we needed laundry and that it had been a week since I'd had a shower. And I figured I'm doing the laundry first because it's so gross. Then I will treat myself to a shower and fresh, clean sheets. It was glorious. But we are back. We are here. And, you know, right before we sat down to do this, you even said... It feels like we haven't done this in forever. Let's be honest. We've been a little irregular lately <laughs> with the podcast. Uh, a little bit. Partly because we've just we've just been booked solid with these events. Uh, we're looking <laughs> forward to getting back on a normal schedule uh, for you yeah. in the future here. <laughs> Absolutely. But we're not, you know, slowing down any of the content. In mm -mm. fact, we're really excited to talk about a new project that we have in the works that we hopefully in the next few days, maybe in the next week, are going to be able to share with all of you visually. But what we are kind of developing is um, an extension of our See America podcast. And we're turning it into a uh, a See America show, I yeah. guess is the best way to describe it. So the first episode will be on YouTube on the RV Miles channel, and it'll be based on our NASCAR experience. So it'll be yeah. a great compendium to this episode. You'll get mm -hmm. like sort of all the details here in this episode about really how to camp at NASCAR, and then you want like a 10-minute visual experience, you can find it out there. Yeah, but this is something that I have really been dreaming about for several years that we have been developing. And it's sort of the idea that if uh, Rick Steves, Samantha Brown, and Top Gear all got together and made a show about travel for our viewers. Yeah. And <laughs> so it's not really about our travels as we see America. It's more about just a, a blank canvas 
of what it's like to go to these places, uh, and I'm I'm thrilled. Yeah, to be doing I, I, this. I lost about half of our footage from NASCAR, so oh, hopefully, uh, <laughs> so the next one, the Balloon Fiesta one, will be a little bit cleaner, a little bit longer, and the we'll get in the we'll get the yeah, feel of how this goes this uh, going is forward. But 100 percent new for us, yeah. and it's something we've talked about for a long time. But it is something that's going to take some time to sort of develop and find our voice. But we're just really, really thrilled about it because it is. It, it really does feel like, uh, you know, for us, it's never been, we've never been very good at our travels, like doing travel vlogs. We've been awful at that. That's not really ever been our style. But this really feels like an extension of the news. It feels like an extension of the podcast. It feels like an extension of the See America podcast as well. Like It just feels like an extension of us. And it was really cool that we could have our very first episode be at NASCAR and at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. So we're going to be sharing that, of course, across all of our socials here, hopefully in the next week. So if you're not following us anywhere, might be a good time to come over and join us on Instagram or Facebook. That said, the See America podcast is going to go on a break for a while now. It is going to go on a break for a while. We're going to take the rest of the year off. So we've talked about we're adding content, but in some places we're also recognizing that we need to slow down. We've been a little irregular and we don't like being irregular. We like to be regular. So we... (laughs) The look on your face says it all. So we are taking a little bit of a break from Sea America and we will pick that back up in the new year as we get closer to road trip season. So we're going to get to uh, talking about NASCAR quite a bit here a little bit later. And if if NASCAR is not something that you think is interesting... Um, I encourage you to stick around and listen because we were we were not big NASCAR fans. Um, not that we had anything against it. We just never really got it's, involved in racing, uh, but we had such a great time. Yeah, I don't think I'd ever watched a race, uh, the start, the finish, the middle, anything up until we got to the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Uh, but we're going to kick off the show today with a question from mm-hmm. the uh, RV Miles Facebook group. Yes. So this question comes from Preston, and this is what he writes. Needing some advice from you experienced RVers, we have been parked for about five months and are getting ready to head out on the road from Georgia to Texas. I was wondering if you think I should re-grease my bearings before we leave. Last time I did it was less than a year, maybe 10 months ago. Worth it or should we be okay? So the rule of thumb is generally every 10,000 miles or so that you put on your trailer or every year you want to repack the bearings so if you don't know what that's referring to uh repacking the bearings is pulling the wheels off getting into the bearings and pulling them out and putting new grease in them and there's lots of tutorials lots of videos online it's fairly easy to do it's a little messy uh and then putting it back together Uh, that grease breaks down over time from the heat of driving it's what kills the friction and when when the grease is gone then you start getting seized wheel bearings and really really bad problems happening so it is something is really important to do and when you do that process you can inspect all your brakes and 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 that stuff stuff too a lot of trailers nowadays come with what's called easy lube axles which is where you can take a, a grease gun to a zerk fitting and you squeeze the grease in and that is it's something that you can do if you have if you really don't have the means of repacking your bearings and it's and it, it needs to be done right away but it is best to pull them off and repack them now to to the question it you're probably okay depending on how many miles you really put on that rig before you took that five month break if you put a ton of miles on it I, I say go ahead and do it and if you're about to put a ton of miles on it i say go ahead and do it if you didn't put a ton on and it just sat for a while and, and then you're taking it on a small trip there's nothing wrong with that yeah it really depends on where they're starting in georgia and where they're ending in texas yeah yeah be a rather long driver (laughs) a somewhat short one (laughs) absolutely could uh but but this is a, a very important maintenance task that i believe a lot of people skip and it really does cause some major problems down the road so it is important to repack your bearings and if it's not something that you feel comfortable doing yourself you can absolutely go to an rv dealership or have a mobile mechanic come and do it won't take them that long a couple hours uh, to do and it's it's really not that big of a job but very very important 
Just schedule it now. If you're thinking six months from now, you might need it. Just go ahead and schedule it now. <laughs> it, you know, there's a lot of talk about the the problems when in getting repairs at, at RV dealerships, but stuff like this uh, or bringing it in for winterization. A lot of people don't do their own winterization. They'll bring it into the dealership. That tends to be a little bit easier yeah, to do because it, it doesn't involve waiting for parts. Yes, right? ex exactly. Yeah. So if this is something you do need to get done, you don't have to take my advice and schedule it six months <laughs> off. You can probably just wait. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about camping at a NASCAR race. We'll be right back. Electrical surge protection is one of the cheapest insurance policies you can provide for your RV and the Power Watchdog Smart Surge Protector made by Hughes Auto Farmers beats the competition with field replaceable surge modules. With other brands, when the surge protector takes a large surge or a spike, you have to throw it away. The Power Watchdog can be brought back to life with one small affordable part you can replace yourself. They'll even give you a free surge module in the first two years and now have a limited lifetime warranty. Use the coupon code RVMILES, all one word, for 10% off your order at HughesAutoformers.com. That's code RVMILES for 10% off at HughesAutoformers.com. Fall is around the corner, so it's time to start thinking about prepping for the winter off-season. Whether you own a motorhome, a travel trailer, or a truck camper, EmpireCovers.com is here to help protect all your vehicles against Mother Nature. EmpireCovers.com offers high-quality, affordable covers that are engineered to protect. Every cover comes with a free multi-year warranty to guarantee that it remains durable over time. If you're not in need of a full cover, Empire has just launched a line of RV rooftop covers that keep the roof of your RV clean and protect it from UV rays. Listeners can receive free shipping and 60% off the original price of their cover order. Visit EmpireCovers.com slash RV Miles or use promo code MILES60 at checkout. EmpireCovers.com protect what you love we're back and it is time to talk about camping at nascar we were so thrilled when nascar at least i was so thrilled when nascar reached out to us and asked us to come visit for a race weekend at the las vegas motor speedway because it is something that i have always wanted to do like i said we're not big nascar people but it just seems so cool to camp right at the track and like the what other sport can you like camp on the the field of the sport essentially <laughs> you're speechless talking about it <laughs> it's amazing so we decided very last minute that we would make the trek to las vegas and mm -hmm. and make this happen and could not have been more thrilled with the experience absolutely so our experience uh was not the dry camping experience that many might associate with nascar which is camping right there in what they call the infield which is in like the center of the track what's really cool is they do have some other options for those who don't want to do dry camping and we we're doing one of those options, which was we were camping up on what is called Motorhome Hill, which overlooks the Nellis straightaway. And it, it's kind of like the ring outside of the track. On one side yes. is the grandstand, and on the other side is Motorhome Hill, where all the motorhomes technically it is it is better for motorhomes. I'll say yes. that. We being a fifth wheel and backing in was a little a little tight, but we made it work. It only took us 20 minutes <laughs> and like three people who wanted to come out and help us yeah. do it. Um but being up there, you have full hookups. So you have 50 amp, 30 amp, you've got water, you have sewer. And we felt that for our first experience and with the boys and uh, the Las Vegas heat, that this would be what would work best for us. And we absolutely loved it. I really, really enjoyed kind of having that downward view of the track up from up high on the straightaway and watching the cars and the trucks as they came zooming by that way. And we were able to kind of set up like our own little viewing area next to the rig. And really, once that sun went down, it was just gorgeous. Well, you might think of NASCAR and camping at NASCAR as kind of a rowdy experience. Mm -hmm. And the the interesting thing here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and all tracks are different. They're all going to have different camping setups. They're owned by different people. They're all different. Um, but up on Motorhome Hill, fairly quiet. There were some gatherings of people where they have like three rigs together. But still and, quiet. And, and do their own thing. Lots um, of kids. Lots of kids. There is a more family-friendly section that is outside of 
the track entirely. So you would have to have tickets then to come in, um, but you can camp outside the, the track entirely. And that's the most affordable option as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's the inner circle, which in spots is a little bit rowdier, but still didn't seem that bad really. Um, and, and I mean, there, there's nothing that's going to be more rowdy than, than, the, yeah. the dozens of cars coming around the track right. with, <laughs> with the growling sound that just gets into your chest. Yes. Uh, it's pretty incredible. Now, Ear plugs are a must. Motorhome Hill is, I will be honest, very pricey. Yes. Um, and so you're going to pay for that experience. But the inner circle camping at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway and the, the, uh, the outer camping, the family camping, a lot more affordable than I thought thought they were mm -hmm. um so they're real good options for anybody's budget um or if you want to splurge and have just a crazy las vegas weekend and have the full hookups and go into the strip and all that sort of stuff yeah which we should say too before we continue to talk more about the the speedway itself and the weekend that camping there you still have the options to leave it's not like once you're inside the grounds you're not able to go you know you go through a very thorough rig and truck check especially for those going on to the infield you're given all of the necessary passes and then you are free to come and go as you would like and so you can on some of those off hours those non-racing hours or event hours you can go into las vegas you can experience that for a little bit and then you can come back to the track and be there in time for the races to begin or the evening events to begin. There's a lot of options to really turn it into a full-fledged just adventure weekend. Yeah, and they have a really good shuttle system. It was a little confusing at first um, until it really got going. Yeah. Uh, but there's a good shuttle system that takes people around everywhere in the track. So no matter where you camp, you have access to all the facilities that you want to participate in. And there are different levels of participation. So race weekend is generally four days long. Um, there are three races. There were three races the mm -hmm. weekend we were there. Friday night, Saturday night, and uh, Sunday afternoon. And on Thursday night, uh, well, you could come in and camp. So you could start your, your camping experience on Thursday. And on Thursday is when they had the opportunity for people to drive on the track for laps for charity. So for a charitable donation, 75 bucks it was for this, you get to take your own vehicle, can't be a motorhome, but you can take your, <laughs> your own passenger car out on the track and drive at 75 miles an hour behind a pace car for four laps and it was amazing it was so much fun and the kids just kept saying go faster daddy go faster now speaking of kids regarding this particular event your child does have to be over the age of six in just order for the laps for charity the laps yeah. for charity in order to do this with you um but the kids loved it it was really weird because our truck is not a speedway truck it's not made for a racetrack it's not made for like 17 degree banks or yes they it's are. made for the crazy <laughs> trail we found ourselves on a few weeks ago uh that's what it's made for so it really kind of was like what are you doing to me why are you trying to make me do this but it was a blast i mean it was absolutely worth the donation to charity i mean that's such a great cause and then you get to go out and drive oh it was a that was a thrill more than i thought it would i didn't think i would care that much but as you're like driving out onto the track and it's like it's beginning and the flags are flying you get really caught up in it so you can watch the the races from your rig if you are somewhere where you have a view of it or if not you can get tickets for the grandstand um which we the nascar was so gracious and gave us tickets to the grandstands as well so we got to experience it from different mm -hmm. angles um i will say i think the best views were from the grandstand the yes because you're right up there along pit row it's the start of the race it's the finish of the race you um, can see the full track from yeah, up there it's it's a great view now our view from motorhome hill though is was nothing to <laughs> yeah there's no comparison for that i mean it, i suppose if you're on the starting line in the front on the other side that would be great yes, but we, it was so amazing they were i mean you could breathe on the cars oh it was it was <laughs> 
so weird. It's still so strange to me that we did this. I think several times that weekend we looked at each other and we were like, is this our life? Like, this is our life. Because it's just, it's one of those things that you never think, like, if you're just not into it, you think, well, why would I go do something like that? I'm not into it. But I think it's one of those events where there's so much happening and the vibe is so like just ecstatic that you don't have to be into it. You just catch the fever while you're there. And speaking of like events, you know, so we, you show up on Thursday, we were able to drive the track. Then on Friday, it's kind of quiet, but you have, you have a race Friday night and it was the Camping World uh, Truck Series. Mm -hmm. And then starting really Saturday morning, and and a little bit on Friday night too, but really Saturday is when everything kicks into gear, especially down in the infield. Yeah, without even going to all the stuff that NASCAR does, where you can actually go get autographs from the drivers and and all that sort of stuff, Mm -hmm. um, which happens in this place that the the Speedway has called the Neon Garage. It's basically where, um, where all the garages are for for the different drivers they actually have the windows open to the inside uh with doors on them so you can get autographs and stuff and that's cool and see them prepping the cars and all that that's an additional fee um but uh if, if you don't have access to the neon garage uh for the whole weekend they still have all kinds of events in the inner circle uh there's like a hangout tent where they had um, they had talks from uh, the track president mm-hmm. about the future. Uh, they're they're going to be new NASCAR cars next year, the next generation cars. They talked about those. They had ice cream for the kids. They had water balloon fights. They had oh, yeah. giant outdoor games, um, uh, the giant TV where you could watch the races. And then uh, <laughs> Abby participated in yoga one morning. Yes, but Saturday morning. this was a morning. little different yoga. Bright and early. I think it started at 7.30 and... And I went down to have yoga and it was goat yoga. So it was yoga with baby goats and they just run all around you. They climb on you. (laughs) They poop next to you. Uh, You're really like if you are thinking I'm going to go to baby goat yoga and I'm going to get my, you know, yoga Zen on. uh, You're not because there's goats everywhere. But it is one of those things that I think if it ever comes across your table, like that you could do it, you should absolutely go. You don't need to know anything about yoga. Uh, There were people just showing up just so they could be in the space with the goats. Um, But I have to say that, you know, I can only, the goats are heavy. Like they can... (laughs) After a few seconds, I was like, okay, you, you can get off of me now. Oh, no, don't let your friend get up here, too. I was like, it was, it was very strange. And so when they, like, you know, did their business, because they get all excited, you're supposed to yell out raisins. And then someone comes over and cleans up the raisins. I have to say, I wasn't thrilled with the idea of goats pooping around me uh, i tried to tuck myself into a corner hoping that the goats wouldn't really oh no notice they me. just went right to the corner well they went right to the corner <laughs> and i was like this is such a bad idea um but yeah you know we were told that they were organically grass-fed and that the, the poop is you know <laughs> good for us i guess in a way or well, i don't is, know what... uh, no i mean it is more like it's more like manure than like Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's goat pellets. I, yeah. I don't know what else to say, but um, it was a ton of fun. And then as the day went on, they really did try to um, have a lot of events that were centered around families. And that was one of the things they really stressed to us when they invited us to come. And then also while we were there was that they really wanted, at least here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, to start creating a more family-friendly atmosphere because they are recognizing that a whole lot of families are are RVing now. And so they really want to create an environment where parents feel like they can come with their kids and have a really great time. And our boys, that balloon water gun fight that they put together for the kids was just epic. It was it was pretty darn epic. It was fun. Um, if you don't buy the passes for the Neon Garage for, for race weekend, they do, however, for all of the campers that come to camp at the race, have a camper appreciation party. So one night mm-hmm. they open up the garage for, for folks to uh, to come in and hang out. And this was uh, one of the 
best sort of like appreciation type yeah. parties that I've ever been to. It was sponsored by National Indoor RV Centers, which is like right next door to the track. It's if you've never heard of them, they are like the most amazing RV storage there is. It's all indoors. Your plug, your RV stays plugged in and, and stuff. It's amazing. Well, we've had them on the show, we've had them I think, on the show. too. So I'll link to yeah. that episode in the show notes, rvmiles.com slash 215. And you can go and learn a little bit more about them because, I mean, it's it's quite the thing they got going on over there. So they this party was I mean, there's a big concert stage yeah. they had a glam rock cover band doing like <laughs> like acdc and motley Crue songs it was so good. Uh, they had an incredible raffle with like great tons of great prizes mm -hmm. that was free to enter and the food and drinks were free. They gave you food and drink tickets. They did. It was really quite, I think, I don't want to say, like, I don't want to use the word generous, because I think that, that this is something that we should be doing more of, especially for those people that were in, the, in our circle. But uh, it was surprising. And I was really, really glad to see it. Because you could just see how much fun everyone was having. And you know what happens when people have fun? They tell their friends that they had fun. And then they come back and they bring their friends. Yeah. And then on top of all this, you're in Las Vegas. Yeah. It, it was just beginning to end a blast of a week. We actually began uh, much earlier before we got to the race. We stayed at, uh, uh, at a, a resort outside of Las Vegas, yeah, which was pretty nice. Which was pretty nice and was actually really decently priced. It was the Oasis RV Resort, and it was a great value for Vegas. It had plenty of amenities. It had, a, you know, a family-friendly pool, and it also had an adult pool, and it had a restaurant on site. And I told Jason, I said, this is absolutely now the place that we will stay every single time we come back into Vegas because you know, we go to Vegas so often. Yeah. But <laughs> the only issue with it was I what I talked about on my black tank um, last week or the week well, before. Yeah, they tried about to the lady that was trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. timeshare us. But yeah, but, but we, it was it was great. But you know now that that's going to yeah. happen, <laughs> and hopefully anyone else who goes there and listens to this knows, and they can uh, be proactive about not you know getting into the Jason Epperson situation where you're signing up for things that you know because yeah. you can't you're awkward and you can't get out of that conversation. So, uh, but yeah, it was a fantastic week in Vegas and we you know we just really uh, want to say thanks to again to NASCAR and the Las Vegas Motor Speedway for having us and that episode that we talked about a little bit earlier our very first episode of the Sea America with RV Miles is kind of like it's working title right now is going to be about this experience and so you can see visually everything that we have talked about here on this episode let's run through a couple quick tips uh, about oh, yes. camping yes. at NASCAR, however. Good um, idea. So as Abby mentioned before, uh, if you are camping in the inner circle, your RV is going to be searched and it is mm -hmm. a thorough search. They are going to come into your RV, open the cabinets and stuff. They're going to want to look through all the Slides pass Slides have to come out. There's going to be a dog going around sniffing everything mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. So you want to prepare for that. You want to leave plenty of time for that and get early because you're going to be waiting in line for that. It wasn't a bad line. They had it moving quickly, mm -hmm. but you don't want to be, if you want to like see the race the night you arrive and you arrive at like, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon, that could be a little bit of a challenge. You want to make sure yeah. to, to get there in enough time to do it. Especially as you get closer to the main event. So even on Thursday when we arrived, we were queued up. So, yeah. you know, just consider that Friday is going to be a little bit worse. Saturday is probably going to be a little bit worse. Now, if you uh, are camping without hookups, you can run a generator. Uh, they do have rules about generators. Most rally camping type situations have rules about generators. Often, uh, especially if your generator is built in, mm -hmm. you have to pipe it up to your roof line above above the windows of anybody near you. Can we talk about that for just mm -hmm. a minute? So I know that that seems kind of like a pain in the butt to have to do, but it's really, really, really important that you pipe that generator up if you are going to be rally camping. Don't run a hose down on the ground. Don't think, well, you know... I don't know. It's not going to bother anybody because what happens at rally camping is you all get put really, really close to one another. 
And so if you don't pipe that generator up, if you have that built-in generator and you don't pipe it up, you are asking your neighbors to enjoy that exhaust the whole time. And they paid just as much money as you did to come to this event. And a lot of times we want to have, you know, doors and things like that open to offset the heat. And you can't do that if your neighbor is not pumping up their generator and sending that exhaust up into the sky. So just really think about that. It's an extra step, but it's so, so important to everyone around you because if we don't do that, then you know things like this, it turns into like Walmart parking and things start getting taken away from us. Yeah. Um, if you do uh, want to have a water delivery uh, pump out of your sewer, uh, or even propane fill, they do offer all of that for a price. Trucks come around to you mm -hmm. to do that, even ice delivery, which is really cool. I think some of that ice delivery, though, was just people who bought a lot of ice and were like <laughs> driving around being like, do you need ice? No, it was sanctioned. It oh, was, was it? Was it? Okay. It was I don't know, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> a few times I was like, are you, do you really have yeah. ice? <laughs> Did that uh, just come out of your freezer? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but the, all those services are available. They do have shower trailers for people to take showers. And this is not like outhouses. These are like nice, um, mm -hmm. you know, semi-truck size trailers, the the kind that have like the the stairways up to them in the built-in showers. And they're really, Fancy. really, uh, you know, a, a staff person that cleans them and all that sort of stuff. So decent showers if you if you need to have that um, access to that. And if you do camp in the inner circle, um, a lot of people get up on the rooftops. You do have to have railings if you're going to be on the rooftop mm -hmm. as part of the rules. There's a whole lot of rules and you can read them uh, on their website uh, to keep everybody safe. Uh, but you can expect if you are in the inner circle to have tire chunks thrown your direction. Yes, you <laughs> Up on Motorhome Hill, that was not a problem. But, no, but we didn't. You could certainly see the shrapnel down below. Absolutely. So that was our experience with NASCAR and the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. If you have been to an event, we would love to hear what it was like for you. Or maybe you have some tips that we didn't think of. Uh, you're free to leave them just down below if you're watching this on YouTube or head over to RV miles.com slash 215 and leave it in the comments there. All right, we're going to take a break and when we come back, we'll have our fresh tank, black tank segment. Be right back. Find your next camping adventure with the Spot Tonight app. Spot Tonight offers real-time visibility across numerous campgrounds available for immediate booking. Easy to use and free to download, with Spot Tonight you can build a traveling profile, share parks with friends via messaging, and mark your favorite campgrounds. Travelers can search for specific parks that meet their exact needs for tonight and beyond. No more blind searches in hopes of finding an available spot. Simply look, book, and go. Campground owners, download the Spot Tonight app and see how your park can join a vastly expanding network. For more information, visit spottonight.com or simply download the app in the Apple or Google Play stores. Look, book, and go with Spot Tonight. It is time to check the levels of our tanks. Jason, what is in your black tank this week? Uh, so I had we had a listener write in about this problem. And it just so happened that we just had this same problem recently. And the problem is <laughs> <laughs> people who park at a fuel pump and just leave their vehicle there. Mm. Uh, and in particular, the outer pumps. Some people would say the diesel pumps, but the outer pumps are sort of important for anybody pulling a trailer, even if they have a gas truck uh, as well. So we are often at a fuel island using the outer pump at a fuel station. And this person wrote in saying how they've had just so many struggles with people filling up their fuel mm -hmm. and then going in and doing things like having dinner, leaving their vehicle at the pump. And we, it was so, we had the weirdest experience. So we, we pull up to this pump uh, in Montrose, Colorado, when we were just about to head out of town. And there was a, a vehicle sitting at the outer pump. This happened to be the only pump that we could possibly use at this fuel station. So we pull up uh, out by there and turn our t turn signal on waiting for that pump. Another RV pulls in behind us because they know that's also the only pump they can use. And we're waiting and we're waiting because I assume somebody has gone inside. But then we realize there's somebody sitting in the driver's seat of the vehicle. And I think, well, okay, maybe the person was in the passenger seat and ran in. No, 
guy was just waiting there, just sitting in his vehicle, hanging out. He was on his phone. Finally got out and pumped some fuel. Yeah. We sat for five minutes before he finally got out. And at five minutes is when I looked at you and I said, do you need me to get out and go over there and ask him what he's doing? Because we need to get moving and there's a line of RVs behind us and the guy must have sensed that he was about to get a talking to because oh no he didn't sense because he got out and he pumped his fuel and then he was done pumping his fuel and he's just like chatting with his daughter in the back seat and stuff like that before he finally pulls away he was on the slow train to nowhere at this gas station (laughs) a, a, a lot of diesel owners in general get frustrated with people using the outer pumps. And mm-hmm. if you're not using a trailer, um, you know, may, and you have only owned gas vehicles, uh, this is not something you might have even considered. But if you can use those inner pumps, because often it is only the outer pumps that have diesel fuel. So a diesel vehicle needs those pumps. But particularly people with trailers need those outer pumps or large vehicles, large motorhomes. Um, there are lots of gas motor homes out there that need to use the outer pump. So uh, I don't know why anybody thinks it's, it's not rude to leave your vehicle. I mean, there every gas station I've ever been to has plenty of parking spots that are not at the pump. <laughs> that you should never leave your vehicle to like go in and do right. anything. Uh, but to leave it for many, many minutes at a time and to be the only pump that is available to a line of people waiting blows my mind. So that was, that was real rough. It was not a good start (laughs) to that travel day. Okay. What is in your fresh tank though? My fresh tank is, I, we did a a posting about this and I'll talk about a little bit more on on the news video this week, but there is a, a new item, uh, that is made by an Israeli company. It's basically a dehumidifier that goes on your roof to create fresh water out of the air, mm-hmm. out of that pulls the humidity out of the air and to create fresh water up to 10 gallons a day for your RV. And it runs off of DC power. It looks like a small air conditioner. I mean, essentially an air conditioner is a dehumidifier, um, but it is more optimized for pulling water out of the air. Everybody knows you run your rooftop air conditioners, you've got water pouring off the sides, right? Um, this is optimized specifically for pulling water out of the air, running uh, as on low power as it can. I'm guessing it's gonna take a decent amount of power, but runs on DC power and uh, could be a great option, especially for people with like lots of solar to to get some water when they're out in the middle of nowhere boondocking and you can retrofit them to any rv they also are offering them to manufacturers to to put in um, during the manufacturing process as well yeah so you'll talk a little bit more about this on the news but if you're not able to join us this weekend i'll drop the article also too in the show notes yeah all right what's in your black tank this week sir okay well sir. Uh, My black tank is going to be a little of a vague book kind of black tank, and it's really just going to be a PSA. I don't necessarily want to get into the details of why I'm about to share this, but I just want to put it out there for anyone that you should never, ever, ever Put your hands on someone else's child. You should never, if you are concerned that that child is not uh, behaving in the way you would like to see them behave, then you need to seek out that child's parent. Let that parent know that you have concerns and then let that parent appropriately deal with it in whatever way is best for their family, which may not be what is best for you, but never, ever, ever. Do you come up to a child and touch them and get in their face and say things like, what did I tell you? Because I will tell you what happens is that a parent comes over and then we have a problem. Yeah, we're not talking about like breaking up a fight here. We're no, 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 about... no, no. We're not talking about anything where a child is in harm's way. Yeah. We're not talking about anything where there are children potentially um, going to be mean to each other. We are talking about situations in which children are being children and you're grumpy about that. And so your solution is to try to discipline the child in the way you think they should be disciplined rather than allowing the parent to do that. And so that is my black tank. And boy, that's probably the nastiest black tank 
I've ever had on this show. Because yeah, maybe it, you know, if you don't like children, maybe you shouldn't work the family night at the Bloom Fiesta. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, maybe it's just that. Maybe you should have asked for that night off. What is in your fresh tank this week? <laughs> okay, so my fresh tank actually goes, and you're going to talk a little bit about this in the news. Uh, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. But our friends Mark and Julie Bennett over at RVLove.com, they just put out a video where, um, a, like a PSA, another <laughs> PSA on fire prevention, but what happens to an RV when it does catch fire. They purchased an RV for $1 and then working with local fire and authorities in Colorado, both at the city and state level, they set an RV on fire and they filmed it to demonstrate just how dangerous that can be. And they did it as part of Fire Prevention Week. And I think that this is a really important video to watch and a really, really good reminder. Even if you think that you have all the precautions in place, we just, we need to be reminded. And so they took six months to put this together and they did it really well. And I'm very thankful that they did. Yeah, I, we talked to Julie uh, about it quite extensively at the Balloon Fiesta. And mm -hmm. um, th she said that the the fire departments were very excited about being involved because there are so many people RVing now that yeah. this was giving them training on a, an RV fire. Absolutely. So Jason's going to share a lot more about that in this week's news, but I just want to thank Mark and Julie for doing that and for helping to raise awareness on, I think, something that maybe we, I don't want to say take for granted, but maybe we just, we don't realize can be as dangerous as it can be. All right, that's it for this week's episode of the RV Miles Podcast. Yes, it is. And like we ask every single week, if you are enjoying the show, would you please head over to Apple Podcast and leave RV Miles a five-star review? We are closing in on 1,100 reviews, 1,100 reviews. So if you want to help be the 1,100th reviewer, that would be amazing. If you would like to talk to Jason and I and connect a little bit more, the best place to do that is over at the RV Miles Facebook group where you will also find 11,000 of the nicest RVers out there. And finally, it's coming up on holiday season. Look, I know we don't all want to start talking about it, but the reality is, is that holiday season is upon us. Shipping is going to be awful this year, folks. It's going to be real rough. So if you are thinking you want to get a jump on it, we would love to come with you if you're headed to Amazon. Just start at amazon.com slash shop slash RV Miles and go from there. Doesn't matter what you purchase. Jeff Bezos gives us a little bit of a kickback and we really appreciate yeah, it. Maybe we'll make enough money that we can join William Shatner on the rocket and go to space. Can, okay, before we go, that was all over the news. I was traveling into the grocery store as it was happening. I was listening to the news. Do you know that all of this fanfare, that it they went up and they were up there for three minutes yeah, before yeah. they turned around and came back. But William Shatner is now the oldest person to have ever gone in space. 80? 90? I don't know how old he is. He's, he's, now, he's, you're, he's, now, you're, now you're playing fast and lose with the facts now. I know, I am. <laughs> how, old do you think, how old do you think he is? I think he's probably around getting close to 80 or around 80. Okay, I, I have to look it up really quick before we go. He is 90 years old. He is old. not 90 years old. That 90, man's 90 years old? He went up into space at 90 years old. Wow. That is amazing. And then he was able to come down and eloquently talk about it. it fascinating but of all it took longer for all of the fanfare to get this rocket up and then to return than it did for them to be in actual space and i'm not not kind of feels like a giant waste of money but that's uh, all right well, well you know you spent three minutes doing something that the majority of people will never experience as long as the price tag stays what it is <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's it for the show. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you have a wonderful fall camping season. Until next time, stay well, be healthy, and keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. Bye, William Shatner. Congratulations on 90 years old being the oldest man in space. That's amazing. <laughs>